1934, I guess it was in the spring of 34, following an American tour, Miss Lenchinska was summoned to Rachmaninoff's apartment in Paris and the beginning of a unique experience. Ruth, wasn't that a rather rare honor for a musician of nine years of age? Indeed it was. You see, just that season, I had substituted for Mr. Rachmaninoff at a recital which he was supposed to have played at Philharmonic Auditorium in Los Angeles. And on a very short notice, I played his program. And when I went back home to Paris, he telephoned my father and asked him to bring me to play for him so that he could hear what a, a little girl sounded like who could substitute for him in public. Well, I was rather overwhelmed because I had seen this great master on stage and never expected to have the honor of meeting him, much less playing for him. He stayed at the Villa Majestique Hotel in Paris, and my father carefully drilled some compositions into me so that I could play for him. And he brought me there, and tall, lanky Mr. Rachmaninoff in his shirt sleeves opened the door and looked way down at me. And he said, You mean that plays the piano? He must have been thinking of you subbing for him. <laughs> well, that was the beginning of two years of meetings uh, with uh, Mr. Rachmaninoff. Uh, was he fond of instruction? Teaching? Oh, no. He always hated to teach. He uh, said how much he despised working with untalented students and that never, never would he be persuaded to teach again. He wasn't teaching me. He was inviting me to tea. And he taught me how to drink tea, that's for sure, and Russian cookies. But each time, he would give me compositions to take home and learn and bring for him, which he would correct very carefully. So even if he wasn't admitting it... He was, he was teaching you. You studied with some of the great masters all over Europe. What would you say was the particular contribution to you from Rachmaninoff? A way of thinking about music, which is peculiar to the composer himself. A composer writes what he is, what he is molded by his time and by the epoch in which he lives. He told me things of himself, which I was to put into the music. He would explain in word pictures what different compositions meant to him. He persuaded me to read books about other composers so that I would know in turn what to put into their music. He taught me how to substantiate these ideas by a, a solid, thorough, technical uh, background. He told me I had fingers like overcooked spaghetti and made me work with a metronome. Now, he was characterized with fire and strength. Uh, do you feel you got this from him? I remember playing for him once, and he said, you played that like a little girl. I said, well, I am a little girl. He said, not when you sit in front of that piano. You are playing my music. You are playing what I wrote down, and you must play the way it is written. Ruth, why have you selected uh, all preludes for this Camera 3 uh, Rachmaninoff program? Mr. Rachmaninoff was very proud of these preludes, all written in the major and minor keys so that there are uh, 24 altogether. He was very proud of these because he said it was more difficult to write a miniature than to write a large composition. Also, I have selected for you this a kind of a bouquet, so that I have many different moods, many different Rachmaninoff moods. We're, we're looking forward to them right now. Now, Miss Ruth Slinjenska, in perhaps 101st concert in 1963, playing Rachmaninoff preludes for camera three. <laughs> 